Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing part two of my Hashimoto story, which is after the diagnosis. I'll try to cover as much as I can today, but it's kind of a long story. <laughs> so if you want to see the diagnosis story, I will put that here as well as in the descri description box down below. For those that don't know me, my name is Janine. I'm 41 years young and I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's nine years ago. And this is my post-diagnosis story. So here I was at 260 pounds sitting in my endocrinologist's office being told that I might have thyroid cancer, I might not, and that if I do have it, it is the best kind of cancer to have because it grows very slowly. So, yay! <laughs> but that didn't take away the fact that it was kind of scary and stressful, um, you know, knowing that I could have cancer and going through all the stuff I did, it was just a huge kind of a wake up call and um, it was just scary, you know, being given a pamphlet about thyroid cancer and reading through it and seeing how the procedure would go and it just sounded awful. <laughs> so, but she reassured me that it does grow slowly and there's still a chance that it's not cancer and that, you know, we would just monitor it over the years and watch for growth. So in the meantime, she needed to treat my hypothyroidism and I just lost my light, didn't I? <laughs> I don't think the lighting situation is going to get any better, so we'll have to deal with it. It's really hot in here too. But she said it was very simple, all I'd have to do to treat it was to take this little pill, this little pink pill for the rest of my life, and it was that simple. So she put me on my first prescription of Synthroid, which was the lowest dose, I think 25 milligrams, and then from that point on, every six weeks I had blood tests and then increase, blood test, increase, because you have to do it slowly. Because if you don't, you could probably have a heart attack or something. <laughs> you can't just go on the high dose right away. So that was kind of a stressful experience too because I don't like getting my blood tested. Um, I don't like getting my blood drawn. I faint and I did faint a couple... I fainted one time for sure. Um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty because I was a heavy lady and I almost fell out of my seat. And there were three women that had to um, come and hold me up which I didn't know until after the fact, but it was kind of embarrassing, but um, it is what it is. <laughs> so every six weeks, blood tests for the next year. It took about a year till I got, um, till my thyroid numbers looked good enough for the endocrinologist to be okay with where I was at, with the dosage of medication that I had at the time. So this is back up to a couple of months after I started my medication. I had to go back to work and I had been off work for 15 months <laughs> so going back to work I dreaded it because um, I had been sitting in my pajamas for that whole time pretty much just wearing pajamas not really worrying you know what I looked like or what I was wearing because I didn't have to see the outside world you know I kind of thought I'd have to wear old lady clothes and just really ugly stuff because that's what I thought plus size people wore. It actually ended up being a positive experience because I found a store that had all kinds of awesome career age women's clothing. So they were all trendy clothes and I actually had the best outfits I'd ever had in my life. <laughs> Better than, like I haven't had anything as nice as those clothes since. So it ended up being positive in that way because I realized that no matter where you're at with your body, that it's really important to have some outfits that you feel good in. And because if you're just dressing like crap all the time and feeling like crap because you don't think you deserve to look good or you're waiting until you get to your goal weight, no, 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 no. Don't be doing that. <laughs> like have at least one outfit that you really feel good in because it's just, it's kind of part of the whole having a good men mental outlook on yourself and feeling good about yourself, you kind of need to have that in place before you can really lose weight and make it stick. Believe me, I know, because I've almost reached my goal weight in the past and uh, it didn't stick because I didn't think I deserved it. And 
I still saw myself as a fat person. So start feeling good about yourself no matter where you are. I just wanted to share that part with you guys because I think it's important to feel good about yourself no matter where you are at. So treat yourself. And I was also still on antidepressants at this point, which I ended up going off um, after my Synthroid was at an optimal level or whatever. So I'll see if I remember to touch on that a little later, but um, Yeah, so I started working again. I had a couple of new outfits I only had to work two days a week in the office and the rest of the time was at home. So I was so lucky to Have found a job like that because it's just what I needed to get myself back into the workforce without having to go full-time so it was really good for me and I think that was part of what made me feel a little better too. So even though my medication wasn't optimal yet, um, going back to work and having kind of a routine and feeling like I'm contributing to something and socializing, just getting outside of my dark, mentally dark place and my comfort zone. Over the next six months, I lost approximately 40 pounds without changing much other than going to work two days a week and working from home and just generally feeling a little bit better about myself. So after that, I knew I had to start working for it. So I started exercising and started exercising and eating right for what I thought was eating right at the time. Hi, Penny. Are you hot? I started dating an awesome guy named Scott who I'm married to now. So life was kind of getting exciting and I really wanted to work towards being healthier. So I hired a personal trainer and thankfully the personal trainer is actually vegetarian. So he wasn't telling me to eat chicken breasts all day and do some crazy keto thing. But he did have me eating 1300 calories a day and exercising like crazy. So that I learned later really wasn't that health healthy but it did allow me to lose 30 pounds in three months, which was way too fast because it was not sustainable and it did not last. So at this point, my endocrinologist said my numbers look good and that I could go back to my family doctor to manage my thyroid medication and to monitor my nodule to make sure it doesn't grow. So even though my numbers look good and I was feeling good because I was dating uh, Scott and life was exciting um, you know I wasn't sleeping 15 hours a day I wasn't depressed and at this point I was off my um, antidepressants so you know things were looking up but uh, like I said despite uh, my numbers looking good I wasn't like you know feeling optimal I guess so fast forward about a year and a half to two years still kind of the same it's feeling symptomatic not feeling my greatest and I had all kinds of weird symptoms that my husband would just kind of what now <laughs> so it kind of became a running joke you know every time he had some new symptom that it was just like oh god like what's going on with you now so it kind of became the norm for me to have weird things going on with my body which I can't even remember half of them now but just seemed like I was all over the place all over the place which I now call the Hashimoto's roller coaster <laughs> so i also discovered that i had gallstones and that's why i had been having stomach pain and problems there so when my old personal trainer told me to go watch forks over knives i was desperate at that point to learn anything i could about being healthier so i was ready to make some changes so we went and watched forks over knives and pretty much went vegan overnight uh, even though we didn't really understand what the whole of veganism was that was enough evidence for us to not eat meat and dairy and animal products so we cut those out and i didn't quite get the oil the no oil thing right away i didn't understand that <laughs> kind of went over my head i was hoping to feel way way better like i thought i would have this amazing story that i went vegan and everything got better you know my thyroid problems were gone and gallstones completely gone but it didn't quite work out that way and i kept seeing all these great stories and testimonies from people and i was kind of getting annoyed it's like why are all these people doing so well but it never it never made me think i'm gonna go back to eating meat because 
that just wasn't something I was interested in eating animal products anymore because I didn't want to have any other health problems added to what I already had so I knew that at least I was in a better place that way you know I wasn't gonna get heart disease and other um, preventable diseases uh, by continuing to eat this way so I stuck with it and eventually I started going to a natural path and she had me do an elimination diet and put me on all kinds of supplements like I felt like I was on a lot of supplements but she that was only like half of what she wanted me to take because I was really like anti supplements <laughs> like I just didn't want to be taking all the supplements they're expensive for one thing so I only agreed to maybe half of what she asked me to do and I didn't get any better I actually felt worse from the supplements so eventually I just stopped taking them and I only continued with the vitamin D and my thyroid medication and she also had me do a food sensitivity test to see if I needed to get off gluten and other foods we did that and gluten came back fine that I could have it which I was happy about but it did later turn out that I had problems with gluten it just did not show up on tests so pay attention to that <laughs> because I have something to say about gluten a little later so I gained some of the weight back but not all of it I gained pretty much all the well almost all the weight that I lost with the personal trainer so I was back up to around 200 pounds and then it was 2013 January that I decided I wanted to you know really like stop eating so much vegan junk and start eating a little healthier but I kind of approached it the wrong way I I started calorie counting and I was hangry all the time I was complaining to my husband all the time like I only have 100 calories left and yeah so I was just not happy but I was losing weight I was just grumpy because I was hungry <laughs> but I did I did lose um, about 25 pounds so I got down to 175 over I don't know maybe five months or so later on I did end up gaining that back and then losing that again which is where I'm at right now but so yeah that was 2013 um, and I was getting really tired of the calorie counting and I stumbled across Freely the Banana Girl and found out about Raw Till 4 and I was just like whoa you can eat as much as you want of this high carb low fat vegan food and lose weight so I was just like I just became obsessed with that whole that whole scene <laughs> but luckily I didn't take too much to her I still had a bit of skepticism I knew I knew that you couldn't just eat as much as you wanted like I didn't start eating 3,000 calories a day or anything like that but I actually as long as I stuck with eating whole plant foods which is this is why I'm kind of glad that I found the whole high carb low fat raw till four thing because it opened up a whole new avenue for me eating whole plant foods and finally getting the oil out and I ended up getting the gluten out of my diet too so um, I think I just it just helped me realize that that's what it takes to feel better I didn't lose any more weight but I started getting leaner my body was reacting so well to eating whole plant foods and not eating junk um, getting a ton of nutrients in that my medication was actually too strong at this point so my doctor had to reduce my medication which was awesome but that sort of led to problems for me because she reduced it too much too fast and it's like my thyroid revolted <laughs> And I started gaining weight really really fast and I couldn't get that off so I gained five pounds couldn't get it off but that's a whole like almost a whole nother story in itself just the problems I was having with um, my weight after that but I also started not being consistent with my diet and <laughs> started eating a little bit of junk here and there and so I ended up gaining that 25 pounds back I quickly got put back on my regular dose of thyroid medication 
and we waited another six months tried again because i was still looking my numbers were my numbers were too low so i was starting to get hyper thyroid so we tried again and i gained another five pounds and my doctor just wanted me to stick with it and see if it normalized and it did but i still never lost those 10 pounds and i started getting inconsistent with my diet and uh over the next three years i gained back that 25 pounds um last april yeah it was like april 2016 um i noticed that uh my neck felt kind of weird it felt tight here and a little bit sore like my muscles were sore or pulling something was like pulling on something and i was feeling around my neck and i noticed uh, a lump so it kind of freaked me out a little bit because I, like I know I have a nodule, but I didn't know where it was and I'd never actually physically noticed it before So I went and got another ultrasound done and it looked like my nodule had grown a little bit so I had to go in for another biopsy and That came back again inconclusive with atypical cells and uh, They wanted to take it out. So <laughs> I didn't want to do that and I never want to have another biopsy again. It was the worst experience of my life um, it was horrible so I don't want to do one of those again and if it is cancer I want to treat it with diet um, possibly even water fasting in the future if it comes to that so but uh, yeah fast forward a little bit <laughs> um, to August I quit my job uh, that I had for the last eight years and I kind of wanted to spend time with family, you know, part of it was having this kind of scare me again. And I knew I needed to get rid of the stresses that I had in order to improve my health further. My husband and I drove across Canada and moved in with my parents and we've been here ever since. So I'd say the drive across Canada, I probably gained about 10 pounds because <laughs> I was eating potato chips all the time. Like literally some of the towns we stopped in had nothing like not even a grocery store maybe a subway or like we stopped at a lot of truck stops and uh, corner stores and gas stations and stuff so uh, at some point we were eating a lot of junk food <laughs> and then when we moved in with my parents they were eating vegan food out of respect for us and there was a lot of there was a lot of like vegan transitional foods that we were eating together so fast forward to November of 2016, which was a couple months after we moved in with my parents. I had gained a little bit more weight, so I was around 210. I was just like, okay, this has got to stop. So I got back to eating whole plant foods and uh, yeah, so I've lost about 30 pounds since last November and here I am now. <laughs> So um, I still, I feel way, way better than I ever have in my whole life. I, I know there's room for improvement and I'm still working towards that. That's why I'm really trying to get myself to love vegetables so I can get all those good nutrients in and um, hopefully shrink this nodule too. That would be great. But um, yeah, so if I could summarize everything I learned over the past nine years, um, Definitely empower yourself uh, no matter what doctors you're dealing with. If there's something wrong, speak up. Really, really push for getting tests done, getting diagnosed, and um, getting treated if you need. But, um, but most importantly, I think what I learned the most was eating a whole plant foods diet without oil and because it's whole plant foods, you're not eating junk foods. So avoiding processed foods, oil and gluten are the keys to feeling better with Hashimoto's. If people are telling you that you have to eat meat, that you have to do a paleo style diet, you don't have to. Don't buy that crap. If you're vegan, you can feel better. Um, just like if you were paleo eating meat, it takes time. It takes effort and patience, but eventually you're gonna feel better if you stick to it. And the less junk you eat, the better off you are. 
I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the story. I hope it helped you in some way. And um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your thyroid story, your Hashimoto's. Comment down below. Um, where are you at now? And if you think this video would help somebody else, please share it with them. And thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you have any questions at all, if I've missed something, comment down below and I will do my best to answer. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.